the Space Wolves, as ferocious as their namesake implies. Clad in grey battle plate, these simple warriors are steeped in ancient and mysterious traditions. They adorn themselves in runes from their native Fenris, and often wear skulls of trophies of great hunts. Based on ancient Norse mythology, these guys love a drink and a story and a song, but not a big fan of books. Those kids could read and be very upset. I'm going to prime these models with a black primer. And for the first armor color, I'm going to use a medium gray. This one is Vallejo London gray. And I'm using my airbrush for this, but you can easily use a dry brush and that'll give you a nice rough scratchy effect as well. And they're both the same painting principle. We're going to be painting from above. And this is going to leave all the places that are in shadows nice and dark, which in turn is going to give us a nice contrast. And all this means for dry brushing is to use mainly downward strokes. And then just one final coat with a slightly lighter grey, this is Dawnstone, and I'm going to apply this with a dry brush regardless. For the bolter casing, I'm going to use Citadel Black Templar Contrast Paint. And this is a lovely one coat paint for any dark surfaces. For the metallic parts, such as these exhaust vents, we're going to be using Vallejo Gunmetal Grey. And there's a couple more details on the power pack to fill in with this colour and also the teeth and the casing on the chainsaw. And if you're feeling extra fancy you can dot in all of the rivets that are found around this armour. For the trim I'm using Balthasar Gold and this is to achieve a burnished coppery brass look. Now I'm not a huge fan of this paint, it doesn't really flow very well but I do hear Scale 75 do some really nice uh, metallic golds. To make it look a little bit more worn out, we're going to use some Agrax Earthshade. And this is also going to create a nice barrier between the grey and the bronze. For the pack marking on the right shoulder, I'm going to be using Corn Red. And as far as I'm aware, the red shoulder on the right hand side means Tactical Marines, or basically Battle Line Units. And once you've given that one or two nice coats, we're going to do some little details on this chainsaw. And I'm just painting some tiny triangles to look like teeth along the length of the chainsaw. Now to highlight the brass, I'm going to use some Gehenna's Gold. And this is a nice warm highlight to this colour. And we're going to apply this by stippling it around the edges of the metallic parts. And this stippling technique is going to give us a nice rougher finish, which is more in character for these space walls. Which in all honesty, probably aren't sitting around polishing their armour. Now luckily I happen to have some of these transfers which look like they're a sample from the Burning of Prospero box. Now if you're lucky you might be able to find some of these on eBay or I think they do actually come inside the Mark III box. And to apply these we're going to be using a product called Microset. And basically what this does is soften the decal which allows you to curve it around the curved shoulder pads. And also when it dries it hardens it so it gives you a lot more life out of your transfers. When you've got the transfer in the position that you want, I like to get a piece of damp paper towel and press it firmly in place. And when it's completely dry, just give it a nice coat of a matte varnish such as Storm Shield. And I've chosen red for the eye lenses on these space walls and to do this I'm going to use my really quick 1-2 method. First is to put a tiny dot of white in the centre of the eye, followed by a really thin wash of Blood Angels Red. And the transparency in this contrast paint will show through that white dot in the centre. Now to roughen up this model a little bit more, I'm going to do some more stippling around the darker metallic areas of this model. And this includes the bolt gun casing and the cabling around the power pack. Now I'm going to show you how to do a really quick, easy, 3D looking battle damage effect. First off, you use a dark colour such as this Rhinox hide, which is a brown, and draw little scratches or dents that you want to appear on your armour. And always remember that less is more when doing things like this. And using your brightest armor highlight color, to trace an extra thin line next to the one you've just done. Or if you've gone for dents instead, trace little sporadic highlights around the edge of the dent. Now you don't have to think too much about where the light is going to be hitting, just put little highlights around and it will look 3D. I also decided to draw a few little runes around this armor. First on this gun casing here, I'm just going to do a little shape of an F. At least it looks like an F anyway, it's probably not. And I also did one on the knee pad in red as well. And to recreate the frozen tundra of Fenris, I'm going to start with Sterling Mud. Followed by a quick dry brush of Baneblade Brown. 
And then we have this wonderful stuff. This is Vallejo Snow Environment. And it's basically a bit of dust and sand mixed with white paint. And using a brush, I'm gonna spread this around on the base, just not being too thick with it. And you can even give a few light taps to the armor to add a little bit of snow around. Because if it is snowing, some of it's gonna land on the armor, obviously. And that's about it for our Space Wolf. Nice and quick, this one.